Eric here dropping in on this. Obviously a rainy and overcast day here. I don't know where I am, uh, but life continues. Move on. Um, hope that you've had a great week. Hope that things have gone somewhat close to what you have desired for them to go. And if not, you're still breathing. You're still in the fight. You know it. Uh, look, I've been talking about this for some time last week, um, and hopefully I'm going to close it out with today's uh, topic, but it's important to understand how things go. If you, if you followed me uh, for any stretch of time, you understand that one of my biggest concerns, one of my biggest complaints about the black community is we fail to develop a perspicacity and an active understanding of how things work, an active awareness of how things work. And because we don't understand how things work, we're easily manipulated, misguided, uh, mishandled, and so forth. And so we really and truly need to learn how things work. Before I forget, if you haven't shown some love, some support recently, we could use your support. The link to support us is in the description box. Okay, that's out of the way. Look, this whole Kanye thing. And if you followed my breakdown of what's going on, I could care less about the gossip. I could care less about what people think about it one way or another as far as what side of the Kanye argument. And, you know, he's a genius or he's an idiot. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I'm looking at where we are as a black community and what things push us, what things drive us, what things grab our interest. How do we move and operate? What do we look to understand? How easily are we emotionally triggered? How easily are we given our narratives and the things that drive us? Are we upset because we should be upset or are we upset because the media has told us that's something to be upset about? All of these things matter, but I want to touch, I've touched on all of that. So I'm not here to trumpet uh, the Kanye genius uh, narrative. I'm not here to trumpet the Kanye is stupid narrative. I'm here to talk about something that's happening and I always try to see things from a microscopic level. So I see things as a microcosm of bigger situations and things of that nature. Kanye is unique in the sense that they're not a bunch of black millionaires, so billionaires, so you can't really look at it and say he's a microcosm and that he's one of the significant representations of that, or was one of the significant representations of that. But what you can see is that whenever uh, something that is extremely valuable and necessary to understand, we have to be real careful. Uh, when we start talking about canceling people and we start talking about censoring people, when we start talking about uh, what we're going to do with people when, when they say something we don't like, because you set precedents. Every time you sit up and say somebody should be canceled because they said something you don't like, what you got to understand is there are some people along with yourself who have opinions. And there are people, no matter how popular you think your opinion is, that don't like that opinion. And at any given moment, at any given time, you can sit up and you can say something that you feel you have a right to say, feel that it's within you to say, and you say it, and all of a sudden, now you're being canceled. We sit on we, we sit on social media all the time. It's a bunch of people in Facebook jail constantly. Why? Because they have set a precedence that when you upset somebody, when you offend somebody, when when somebody isn't happy with what you post, they can go report you. And because they don't have the manpower to really actually check to see if there's a true violation. Nine times out of ten, you got people that are solely dealing with restricted and suspended accounts because somebody didn't like something they said. It wasn't that what they said was in any way reprehensible, irreprehensible. It was that somebody got in their feelings and was able to sit up and literally shut them down for a certain period of time uh, because they said something they didn't like. And we have to be careful about that. But that's the small thing on that. What you got to watch is what, what, what we are witnessing is, again, whether you are on the I love Kanye bandwagon or you are on the this idiot uh, said slavery is a choice uh, bandwagon, here's what you got to understand. What you are being shown now is the force, the power, and the brute sheer strength of a group with economic force waging 
economic warfare. What it looks like. And what happens when you build on an infrastructure you don't control. What happens when you go out and the whole thing is when you don't control an infrastructure, when you don't control uh, mechanisms and movements and systems and policies and everything like that, when you don't have that kind of control, you've got an issue, especially when your livelihood is highly dependent upon, dependent upon popular opinion. When you build your brand on your recognition, your personal recognition, your personal space. If you are very popular and famous, oh, it's a great thing to do. The problem is it's easy to target because now nobody wants to deal with you because the word is put out. But this isn't just simply people deciding, I don't like what he said. This is people actually being told by subtle suggestion, by movements, by uh, the way that the media is playing it out to take specific action. And there are groups and companies and organizations that are taking this action, not because they actually want to, because they are powerless to not do it. Uh, I'll give you a prime example. If you actually think Adidas want to cut ties with Kanye when he represents as much as he does of their annual revenue, and it's easy come money. They don't have to push it that hard. He's out pushing it. He he, he literally represents and, 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 and promotes himself in a way that the product sells itself. So they don't have a hard, heavy marketing budget behind it. When the last time you saw a Yeezy commercial? Yet, it's a $400 million a year, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. $400 million a year uh, product or brand for Adidas. You think they actually wanted to let that go? They didn't have a choice. When you understand the fact that the dynamic couldn't have been any worse for Adidas, Adidas, number one, was going to be under the gun because his primary wealth, the, the bulk of his primary wealth comes from them. So they are under pressure. But here's the thing. Adidas is owned by a person of German descent the brother of the person who owns Puma. Uh, these two brothers are German, and we're talking about uh, Jewish people who have an issue with him. The Holocaust, Germany. You get what I'm saying? That optic is the worst optic in the world. A German-owned company, quote-unquote, is backing an anti-Semitic Semitic, uh, trumpeter. And I'm not saying it is, it isn't. I haven't even heard the statements. I didn't get all into that bull crap. What I'm saying is they've made up in their minds that it's anti-Semitic and that is all that matters. That is all that matters is they believe it. And if they believe it, that's it. And this is what economic warfare looks like. This is what literally stripping a person of their livelihood looks like. And this is what happens when you don't fall in line. And then you don't fall in line and you're building your entire livelihood on something someone else built and created. All I'm saying is this is one of the reasons why we need to really truly use our creativity, use our resources, and start building things that we control, that we can self-sustain if necessary, that we can little, because here's my thing. I believe that there's a level of social responsibility and I don't believe that the freedom of speech is the freedom from accountability. What I mean is you have a right to say whatever you want to, but you have to understand that when you say it, there are gonna be consequences. Um, if you say something about the wrong person in the wrong way, there are consequences. There are certain things you can't say about the LGBTQ community. And why? Because they develop a level of power, they've de developed the levels. And matter of fact, a lot of groups have went through certain situations and things and literally have made themselves a part of a population that is quote unquote targeted but nobody's been targeted more than us, and yet we're the least protected. 
that's what we didn't get on this. We didn't get that. Kanye made, said a couple of sentences and cost him a fortune. It pushed an entire global connection to move against him. Our communities are flooded with trash music that promotes violence, promotes misog misogyny, disrespect, disregard, denigration of our women, uh, promotes drug use, promotes irresponsibility in so many ways you can't even name them all, and nothing. We are targeted by law enforcement, despite the fact that statistics show white men are more likely to be carrying drugs, we are stopped and accosted at a much higher rate. Despite the statistics that show that 71% of officers slain in the line of duty are killed by white men, it's the black men that cops fear and shoot even when we're unarmed. Up until George Floyd, you know, that was around, we, we, we raised hell about Mike Brown. But again, wealthy elite usurped it, misdirected the energy, drained the funding out of it via Black Lives Matter using black faces with uh, ulterior motives and alternative agendas and literally killed one of the most powerful movements I had ever been aware of in my lifetime. You have to go back to some pretty significant things, maybe Watts, to look at that and say, okay, you, the L.A. riots behind the Rodney King verdict were very devastating and very forcement, uh, very uh, forceful and damaging, but it had no purpose. It had no direction. It had no movement. It had no brain. It was just pure emotional force and frustration. Ferguson was different. Ferguson had on the ground, natural, organic flow. It had a purpose, it had a meaning, it was going somewhere. People were gonna be held accountable. That was a changing of the guard. That was gonna be something new. And in came Black Lives Matter. And anybody that spoke out against them died. And the most notable is King Darren Seals. Um, I've got direct connections with that, uh, with uh, Neota Yura and what was going on and what they were sharing and what they were telling and I was sharing it and I was writing, I was trying to let you guys know, hey man, I'm talking to these people and they're telling me this is not what it seems. We need to reel it in. I went to the website. The website had nothing about black men. The traditional black family wasn't even supported or praised on there. This was definitely an anti-black male organization literally uh, cutting its teeth on the death of a black man. We, we lost sight of that. Okay, where am I getting? I'm saying that we are going to have to recognize and be aware of how things work. We're going to have to recognize and be aware of what's being done and why. And we're going to have to understand that we can never build and have power on a platform we don't control. Because the moment that we move in opposition to the ones who do control it, we're going to be shut down. You're watching this happen with Kanye. If it can happen with Kanye, the message is, and the reason that it's being so forceful, forceful is the message is being sent. And if you think this is just about Kanye, you're, you're, you're sadly mistaken. The message is being sent. If we can do it to him, we can do it to you. And so what is that? What, what, what is that? Where is that happening? At? That's happening at a level that most people aren't even aware. It's not the average person that it's happening with it or it's done to. Where it's happening at is with people who really know something and have a voice are thinking now, man, do I want to go out and jump in this? They ripping this dude apart, man. My little hundred thousand dollar a year organization, my little million dollar a year uh, thing that I'm a, I've got going on. I don't want to blow that. I'm going to sit up and uh, go back to talking about X, Y, Z on YouTube. I'm going to go back to talking about, I'm not finna, I'm not about to call it. And you know what? You would be shut down so fast if you did. And the thing is, there's no faith in the black movement 
for people to step out to say, man, if they come after me, my people gonna come stand with me and I'm still gonna be okay. My people are gonna hold me up. We don't know that. We don't have anything to back that up. So what we are doing now and looking at it is how much do I wanna risk my livelihood when there's no platform to sustain my rebellion or my my polarity in positions to a much stronger and a much powerful force and that's what happens that's what uh economic warfare is it's saying look we are going to hit you to where we're going to make it difficult for you to eat and live at the level you've been living at we're going to come after you we're going for the jugular anytime you move against us we are going to hold you to the mat and we're going to hold you there until you heal until you say uncle and from what i understand um, I haven't paid attention to it, but I've seen a couple of things where they're actually saying um, the apology tour has already started. And again, I don't have a side on this because I haven't really paid attention to it, but I do know some of the things I have heard that were said are things that we need to address. Um, and nobody's talking about that because they've made it about them. And so nobody's talking about the things and the things he's pointed out that affect us. You see how that works? Nobody's doing it. Nobody's addressing the things that address us that are going to have a lingering effect on us because everybody's talking about what he did to them. That's not an accident. What I suggest is we focus on building for us. Not worrying about what other groups are doing, not worrying about pointing the finger, not worrying about yelling from the top of our lungs, look what they're doing. People are who they are. You don't have to convince white America of what they've done and what they're doing. They know. Even the ones that don't approve of it know. They're just not willing to do anything that will cost them their privilege and place them in equal footing with people who can probably outperform them. So they're going to sit there and be quiet. So then what does that mean? That means that we have to find a way to do something to make things better for us and to at the same time develop and build power. You got to understand the Holocaust wasn't even a hundred years ago. Slavery was 150 something years ago that it supposedly ended. The difference is that was a specific agenda put in place. There were protocols put in place. That was an understanding. We're never going to allow this to happen to us again. That's what they did. We kept looking to the people who did it to us to fix it. See how that's working out for us. It's time for us to do some changes. I can go off into this and talk about it for a while, but it's Friday. I'm, I'm about to chill. But I had to bring that to you. So on that note, I'm going to get out for you for something to think about. Again, for the people who uh, appreciate the work we do at the Odyssey Project, Black Man Lead, Research, Think Tank, uh, other wraparound service, mental health wraparound service, domestic violence, intimate partner wraparound services at the Odyssey Project. If you believe in what we do, show the love, show support, support, support us. The link is in the description box, or you can give by the organization's cash app handle which is also in the description box. On that note, I'm about to get out of here. I need a break. All right, on that note, talk to you soon.